This video is part of a series where we build an entire FPV drone from start to finish. So if it feels like you're in the middle of a conversation that you missed the start of, that's why. If you're here for the information in this specific video, keep watching. But if you want to find out the full context for what's going on here, there's a link in the video description to the full playlist, and you might need to go back and start with video number one. At this point, we are nearly done with this build. We just got a few more little things to do with the flight controller before we take it back to the bench. And then there's a few more little things we're gonna do over there. And then we're gonna take it outside and we're gonna freaking fly it. But before we do, there are a few little odds and ends to set up on the flight controller. And that's gonna be what we do in this video. And the first thing we need to do is take care of this freaking warning message that's been popping up the whole freaking time we've been working with the quadcopter. The accelerometer is enabled, but it is not calibrated. All right, fine. What we're going to do is go to the setup tab and you want your quadcopter laying flat on the desk. Um, mine is not quite flat on the desk because my mouse uh, pad is in the way. So let's just lift that up and we're going to lay it flat, flat on the desk. And we're going to hit calibrate accelerometer. That's going to be important if you are using angle mode because the accelerometer is the sensor that is used to tell the quadcopter when it is flat and level versus when it's upside down. Calibrating the accelerometer will not give you a perfectly flat hover every time because there's always real world circumstances that make the quad drift just a little bit, but you want it to be calibrated pretty close to correct just as a good starting point. The next thing we're going to do in the setup tab is we're going to check that the flight controller is installed facing the right direction. Way back in the video when we put the flight controller on the flight control stack, I said that you needed to have the forward facing arrow facing forward, but there was a uh, way that you, in software, if you didn't install it facing forward, that you could fix that. And you might say, well, we installed it facing forward, so why do we need to worry about this? Well, because it's always a good thing to, cr to double check when you do a build, because sometimes the forward facing arrow, it just, you, you should check. Well, the first thing we're gonna do is just, we're gonna, click the reset Z axis with the quadcopter facing away from us. And that will reset this 3D model to also face away from us. This doesn't have anything to do with the configuration of the flight controller. It just resets the 3D model to face away from us. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna pitch forward. And sure enough, I'll be, what the F is going on here? Did I not, the forward facing arrow is facing forward, you goofballs. Did I install it upside down? I don't know, but sure enough, look, I pitch forward, the 3D model pitches back. It's wrong. Okay, well, let's think about this some more. Let's try the roll axis, roll axis. Oh my God, I roll to the right, it rolls to the left. Yaw axis, yaw axis is correct. So what we need to do, the, the flight controller doesn't think that it is right side up and facing forward. It is flipped in some way, even though the arrow is facing the direction that it seems like it ought to be. We're gonna to go to the configuration tab and I'm gonna show you how to fix this. I'll bet you a million dollars that this is incorrect and we need to change that to default. Don't do that. Stay right where you are. And now, correct. All right, so that explains why even though I installed this facing forward, it didn't think it was facing forward. This setting somehow came from the factory with the gyro misaligned. I want to show you the correct way to fix this other than just having enough experience to go, oh, that clearly can't be right. And then change this gyro because generally you should not change this gyro orientation. That should be set correctly from the factory and you should leave it alone. But if you do have a flight controller that is installed and it's not facing forward and the movements are incorrect, like we just saw, what you can do is you can change the board and sensor alignment, and this will cause the flight controller to virtually rotate and flip. So we had the pitch axis and the roll axis were wrong, but the yaw axis was right. If it's flipped upside down, the yaw axis will invert, but the yaw axis wasn't inverted, so it must be right side up. Both pitch and roll were inverted. So that must mean we have to yaw 180 degrees. We have to basically just rotate it 180 degrees front to back. You may have to do a little bit of trial and error to get it to work correctly if you don't, if you don't have a lot of experience solving this problem as I unfortunately do. So now with that setting changed, sure enough, it moves correctly on all three axes. And that's how you would fix that if you had mounted your flight controller facing backwards. But what I actually want you to do is go to the configuration tab and 
set your first gyro to default because that's clearly what it's supposed to be. And I don't know why it came from the factory shipped as clockwise 180. That makes no sense. Next up, uh, we are going to enable the RX lost and RX set options under DSHOT beacon configuration. And what that is gonna do, that's how we tell the flight controller that we wanna beep the motors when we activate the beeper mode that we created back in the aux modes. In fact, let me demonstrate that for you. I will need to have a battery plugged in because the motors require a battery to do their thing. Now that that's done, if I push this button, there you go. That's what it's gonna sound like when you activate the beeper mode. Here under arming, maximum arm angle. What this does is it prevents the quadcopter from arming if it is more than that number of degrees away from horizontal. And the idea is that if you're holding the quadcopter in your hand, then it probably won't be flat and level. It'll probably be tilted and that'll prevent it from arming. I like to disable this because it is annoying when you're like on a hill or you've put the quadcopter down and like slightly it's on a rock and it's not flat and level and it won't let you arm. You can disable this by changing that to 180 and save and reboot. Just be careful not to flip the arm switch while you're holding the quadcopter in your hands. In fact, I'll show you another trick, a little free tip here. When you land and disarm the quad, after you disarm the quad, raise the throttle. The quadcopter will not arm when the throttle's raised. You can use that as kind of like a safety. Before you fly, lower the throttle, Arm the quad. Oh, look at that. It armed. I was kind of surprised that happened. How did it arm? Why was it? No, oh, it won't do it now. It's because I disconnected and power cycled. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, raise the throttle, flip the arm switch, it won't arm. The next thing I want you to do is go to the presets tab and we're going to load a couple of presets in. And the first preset I want to suggest you load in is the heads up racing rates. Uh, some people are going to see that and are going to think racing, I'm, uh, racing is that too much for me? Uh, this is my first quadcopter. These rates are actually very forgiving and very precise. And so I think they're very good for beginners. And I think that's a better rate curve to use than the rates that come as the Betaflight default. I'm going to suggest you choose the heads up racing rates and pick and save and reboot. And the other thing we need to do is select the appropriate RC link profile for the Express LRS packet rate that we're using. Here's what I mean by that. Go to your radio and go into the Express LRS script and look at the packet rate here. And you can see my packet rate is set to 250 Hertz. The idea with the packet rate is that higher packet rates give you lower latency, but shorter range. What I'm gonna suggest, uh, if this is like your first build, I'm gonna suggest that you lower that packet rate down to 50 Hertz the lowest one, which will give you the maximum possible range. And I think that's more important for a beginner. Whatever packet rate you end up using, like I'm gonna use 250 Hertz cause that's, cause that's what I like to use. Go ahead and choose the RC link category and then find the Express LRS preset for that RC for that packet rate. So in your case, if you're choosing 50 Hertz, you would click the 50 Hertz option. For me, I wanna choose 250 Hertz and then under fine tuning, I want you to choose freestyle and that's it. And save and reboot. That's, I think that's it. I think our flight controller is fully configured. I can't think of anything else like essential that you guys need to know. I think it's time to take it back to the bench and finish assembling it and then freaking take it outside and fly it. I'm so excited. Well, I'll see you there. There's a playlist in the video description down below. Uh, where you can find all the videos in this series. As well, a card is gonna appear on screen with the playlist link in it. If you can see uh, cards, I will see you in the next video.